Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and this is an unboxing and rambling video of, well, Dead Reckoning. And it's been way too long since I've done one of these, the reason being just I do these videos when I get fun boxes to unbox, uh, otherwise I don't. Although, we will have a whole bunch coming up soon. We have we have this, I have the Hunter's AD which came in, I'm going to be doing a uh, unboxing with my daughter, Creature Comforts, I, I have... Massive darkness that's due to show up any day now. I have a whole bunch of things that are slowly coming, so in case you're one of those who missed these, there's going to be way, way too many of them. Now, it's called an unboxing, first of all, coffee shop, by the way, usual coffee shop, my knife, my coffee, all those good things, but it's called an unboxing and rambling for those who don't know about these and didn't miss these because I, I ramble on these. This is going to be slightly marginally about Dead Reckoning, showing you the various things, going, going over the various stuff, but then primarily about whatever tends to go on at any given point. It also means that the quality of these videos is all over the place because sometimes they're boring and sometimes they're incredibly exciting. Incredibly is probably a strong, strong compliment to myself that I haven't yet earned, but marginally exciting. Let's go with marginally. Now, Dead Reckoning is actually an interesting one for a variety of reasonings. Re reasonings, or a variety of reasonings. Dead Reckoning is an interesting one for a variety of reasons, but the main primary reason is the fact that this is a game that I technically didn't back, but always knew I was getting. You see, Dead Reckoning, and this is going back to like age-old drama on the channel, I mean, not really drama on the channel, but it was drama on the channel, I guess, in a matter of speaking. So let's go ahead and open this up. We have Dead Reckoning, the box. Oh, part of the problem with doing unboxing and ramblings is sometimes I start a train of thought, get distracted by things like board games, because you know those are here, and then proceed to never ever finish that train of thought. Apology in advance for one of the happenings. So we have a solo rulebook, a full dedicated solo rulebook, although it probably says you have to know the rules. Dun, 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 dun. I don't see offhand. It looks like it's more about maybe scenarios or something. I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to go through this. This is way too short and doesn't have a whole lot of stuff in it. So this is one of those times you're going to have to know the full rulebook and then dive into the solo rulebook. Now, the full rulebook is pretty long, but I don't remember the game being that difficult. I mean, we're talking about 31 pages, and these are not small pages. But if we go ahead and take a closer look, we can see over here we have the introduction, we have components, we have setup and all these things. Setup diagrams take a while to go through. And then over here on page 7, we start with gameplay. Now, going through the rulebook, it does seem to be graphic heavy. I mean, this whole page would not take that long to go through. This page took a little longer. So it does vary in terms of just how much is going on. Uh, again, the game itself I don't think is that difficult, but there are symbols and stuff to know. It's the kind of thing that you're going to want to have a player at the table who knows how things work, and they can probably get other people up and running in 20 minutes, maybe? 20 minutes is probably a roughly educated guess. And then over here, page 22, is where we have game end and onto scoring. So 7 to 22, 15 pages, medium graphics, uh, you know, it's not the easiest nor the hardest game to learn. That's where I would put it, which is 20 minutes does fit in with that. And then we have all the cards, some clarifications, some symbology, all those fun things. So not nearly as bad as it initially presents itself at first glance. Let's go ahead and put these off to the side somewhere, because that's what we have to do. Then we have the battle board. This battle board over here, this is where we are going to be rolling dice from the ships. So we're going to construct the ships, we're going to slot them into here. You're going to roll dice into the ship, and they're going to come sprawling out onto the battle board, landing in this various grooves and earning you the various things as you fight through the game. Now, I only played Dead Reckoning once, by the way, and I will be doing a full review of the game at some point, because I probably should. My, my last review was more of a kind of first impressions, because I played it once, and I played it with Quacklope, and I would really enjoyed the game. But also, it's, also, it's actually the first game I ever played with Quacklope, by the way. So, I really enjoyed the game, uh, but with the caveat that I played once, and we didn't actually have that many battles in our game. Now, the real question is, do I want to try to construct a ship on camera? Am I that brave? I'm probably not that brave, because the, the balance of these things is it works out great if it goes well, but it doesn't work out great. Maybe at the end of the video, I'll construct some ships. We'll see. No guarantees, no promises. We will do what we will do. But those are the punch boards. Punch boards don't seem overly impressive or bad. It's typical punch board quality. My standard thing here is... Punch boards come in, in three general metrics. Uh, There's a whole lot of measurements, but three general. One is this feels flimsy, two is this feels thick, and three is this feels normal. This falls into the this feels normal category. Uh, these are going to go onto your center island, if I'm not mistaken, the, uh, the ports, so to speak, over there. Uh, speaking of which, we have our ports. This is going to be the ports where you're going to start laying out the card rows. If you're wondering where the rest of the board is, the answer is you don't have a rest of a board. You're going to have your ports coming down here, and you're going to be laying down cards to, uh, that's not true, you're going to be laying down tiles, not cards, I apologize. Now, these over here are going to be the tiles that you're laying out, and you're slowly going to be putting down cards onto these spots that you can acquire. So you are laying down cards, 
where they're going to be on this, and this is going to be, I believe, variable based on the player count. If not that, then the cards you fill in are variable based on the player count, and it's a little bit of area control. It's a little bit of, well, card crafting and deck building, but you're going to be trying to control the various islands, putting down your tokens on these spots as you go through it, uh, building a variety of buildings that will help you out, doing a whole bunch of piratey things in a very Merchants and Marauders style of gameplay, meaning it's going to be some degree of pick up and deliver, some degree of area control, some degree of merchanting your merchanting around, just trying to merchant as much as you merchantly can, and then some degree of slapping each other in the face with your cannons. That's, that's the way this game will play out. But that's the, that's the core concept. And then there's going to be these two sagas over here, which will maybe unbox, I guess. I don't, I mean, they're semi-secret-ish. We'll see. I'll timestamp. I'll warn. I'll look at the timestamps. If the timestamps for the sagas say spoilers, hint, there might be spoilers. Anyways, if it says spoiler light, then it means I'm not sure if it's spoilers. Meaning my, my ignorance of the game may put it in such a way that I just don't know if there are spoilers, because that can happen. So, let's see what else we got here. We got more stuff, and eventually we'll get back to what I was saying, because I was talking about Dead Reckoning and drama on the channel. So here are your ships over here, your little Q spots. We can punch these out, but I'm not going to, because then they'd be on the floor, and then I'd have to pick them up. I'll punch them out properly later. But here are your various ships with a name. I imagine these are not double-sided. They are not double-sided. No reason for them to be. Uh, we're going to put those to the side, and then we have boxes. We also have goodies off to the side, but first, coffee break. Now, when I say Dead Reckoning had drama on the channel, what I mean is I did a video on Dead Reckoning back in the day that I was not a fan of. I was not a fan of it because it was a video, I believe it was titled Dead Reckoning, Why All the Outrage? Or something along those lines. And the reason being is because during the campaign, during the campaign for Dead Reckoning, there was a degree of people frustrated, myself included. And I was trying to go into why I felt, that, to be very clear, if you've watched my content, you should know this by now, the video was not me ranting at the camera, my video was me trying to elucidate the reasons I felt people, including myself, were upset. Ideally, communicating that very calmly and peacefully, because I like to be that person, I do not like to be the person who's yelling and screaming at the camera. Here we go, by the way, here's a see-through card. This is going to be the nature of having, it's going to be hard to like, focus on these cards over here. I don't even know. There we go. There you can see over there. We got the see-through cards over here. These will go into your, your card decks as you slowly build out their decks in the game. But anyways, uh, the campaign had a bunch of frustrations, which I may or may not get into throughout the course of this video. But the relevant point is that I I did a video on that, and it was my most it was my fastest growing video on the channel at that point in time. Keep in mind, this is a while ago, so things have changed since then. But at the time, it was my fastest growing video on the channel. This is a very nice box, by the way, just for the record. Lots of cards over here. Lots of your little, like, you know, the, all the, the, the card crafting. In case you didn't realize, I said it briefly. This is a card crafting game. You're going to have your cards. You're going to have all these card thingies, which you can craft out your cards and build your cards. And at some point, let's go ahead and start opening these. But yeah. And so I just didn't like the fact, I never liked the fact that, I mean, don't get me wrong, I like views, and that's important because views translate to subscribers, subscribers translate into more views, more views translate into more ad revenue, Patreon, all the usual good things that help this actually become a sustainable full-time thing. So I like all that stuff, but I like it with the caveat that I don't like the fact and never like the fact that my fastest growing video was based on drama. That's not my goal. My goal is not and has not and never will be drama. I need sleeves. Where are my sleeves? I'm going to have to like keep putting these things off to the side until I get sleeves. We'll come back to this. But anyways, I never liked being... I don't, I don't like and I never liked being focused on drama. It is always going to be a part of any content because if there's something that's newsworthy, I'm probably going to talk about it in some way, shape, or form. But it doesn't, it, I don't like the idea that it's going to be my most popular stuff. That just feels icky to me. Icky is probably the appropriate word. Do I have sleeves anywhere? Or are they all outside the box? You know, we're going to have to go through. You see, we have these boxes over here, which is a good time to pull these barrels off from the side. So I have these barrels over here, which will go in here. I, I don't know if this is the official box for the barrels. We'll find out. We have crates as well. Let's go ahead and open this up. So yeah, so I never, I, I always, ha I was happy the video did well and was never happy that it was my best video at the time. I'm happy it's no longer the best video at the time. Although, although my best video on the channel to date is the one, uh, uh, top 10 worst value board games. So still based in negativity, but first of all, the video is not as negative as all that. And secondly is, I'd rather something like that than something that's more drama-based. That feels less personal, if that makes sense. 
But that's what's going on there. Uh, as far as the reason I said I didn't back this game, it's because because of the fact that I disagreed with the way AEG handled that campaign, like I said, I was one of the people who was upset with it, I, I felt that I couldn't both put out a big video about it and then back the game. So I didn't, but I also said at the time, make no mistake, I am 100% getting this game. The only question is how. Probably secondhand market from somebody else who backed it. We'll figure out a detail, we'll figure out a way. And then sure enough, months later, I don't remember exactly when, someone went ahead and uh, traded me a copy of the game. So I do have the game. Did not back it. That was never about me not getting the game, which I said clearly at the time. It was about me feeling the need to make a statement to a degree. Just I, I don't like the, I don't like people who just complain and still just go ahead and back whatever. So I felt I had to do something. It's not a big thing. Don't get me wrong. It's a very small thing. Look at these barrels. These barrels are very nice. But as far as like the general overview of the campaign, uh, the general notes as far as what was upsetting, so to speak, or put people off, uh, a lot of it came down to price points and expectations. Uh, but the way the campaign was handled in a way that made it seem like, are these the, what's container is this for? Is this for the treasure chest? You see, I have no clue what's for what in this. So we're going to go ahead and treat this as if it's for the treasure chest, and we'll just uh, call that a day. Uh, we'll put them in here for now, and we'll deal with it if I'm wrong later. That just seems reasonable. Oh, we also have all of those tokens over there, the punch boards. Again, we'll figure this stuff out. But anyways, so I, where was I? The drama, the drama. The drama was about expectations. It was about people having certain expectations, no cards to lose in here, uh, and the expectations not being met. And I believe AEG incorrectly set expectations. I mean, I do believe it was, a fault's a tricky word, but I, I believe that they set expectations that were not going to be met. And that is just life unfortunately that's just the nature of things so i guess this is where the pirate ship goes we have our handy dandy uh construction guide here so we'll use that uh, before the end of the video but and we'll have to like try to remember the good news is if i actually forget how everything went together i can just you know look at this video that is the good news now we have our ships our little ships that will in some way go in something again i have no clue how this is meant to be oh this is player these are player boxes okay i know what's going on we got our player boxes, which means our ships can go in there, which means I need to take these out of there. You bad little crates over here. We'll put them off to the side. And we're going to start by putting our ships there. But first, let's show you the ships. They are not asymmetric, so I'll show you a single ship, and we'll call it a day. But here is the uh, little 3D ship. Uh, the little, little uh, ship miniature. Ship miniature. Little pirate ship. Pirate ships just flying around in the seven seas. And we'll have to put one of these in here, like so, so it can go in there, in there, along with other stuff, I assume. Like, for instance, we have your player tokens. Let's go ahead and open these. We'll put these down. We got our non-deluxe barrels, which are honestly kind of nice. So, like, I don't know what to do with this situation, because these barrels are obviously significantly nicer. But there's something wrong with these barrels. So, for right now, that's not going to fit. That's not going to fit at all. I don't have a good answer as far as what to do with these barrels. We won't talk about it. We don't talk about barrels. No, no, no. We have our... What are these? Oh, these are our buildings. We have our buildings, which I don't remember. I don't believe they're attached to specific players. I could be wrong, but I don't believe so. Because if I recall correctly, you can take over islands with buildings. Again, don't take my word for it because it has been a long time. We have our little fire tokens. We have our... Why am I throwing all those bags? Give me one second. There's just so many boxes that I assume I don't need boxes, but here we go. Look, guys, right. I was right. There, these can go right back down there now that I just did that. But we have our fire tokens over here that can go in here. These are fire tokens. We'll dump them into the uh, fire token box. We have our building tokens, which I wish were a little bit more obviously distinguishable. I mean, it'll be better once they are set up on the, the board, so to speak. But I don't know why I said so to speak. There's all this concept of filler wards when you talk especially when you ramble or when you're on camera doing whatever for however long. But some filler words just make no sense whatsoever, and they just become part of your vocabulary just to fill in gaps in the conversation. The conversation you're having with a camera that's not like, I mean, there's a camera here. I'm talking to a camera. There are people upstairs. You may or may not hear them in the background, but they are not talking to me. Then we have our tokens. Our tokens that will go into the box, I believe, based on the um, my my very intuitive Sherlock deduction skills, that that is going to be referring to the black cubes. And so we're going to put the black cubes in here because that does not correspond to our player color. So we're dumping all these things in there, hoping that I'm right. We'll figure out if I'm not later. But yeah, going back to Dead Reckoning. So they had they had a bunch of small things. They had things like they had like the first day had a whole bunch of like excellent daily unlocks. The first day of the campaign. 
And then it sounded like, oh my gosh, across the course of the campaign, there's going to be so many other daily unlocks. And then across the course of the campaign, there were daily unlocks. There were. But they were in the form of things like, you know, a card, a promo, uh, like a promo for a different game, a live stream. Like, they had things like, oh, we're going to have a live stream as a daily unlock. Or here's an optional buy as a daily unlock. Meaning, so, like, the daily unlocks weren't what you typically expect when you see daily unlocks. And combined with what they revealed the first day, they set expectations, to myself and others, about what you could expect to see across the course of the campaign. Expectations that were not met. And so that's where the frustrations come into play. Uh, one of the biggest problems you can do is set expectations. Actually, I, I, one of the things I say on this channel a lot, not my own saying, but one that's stuck with me for years, is happiness is reality minus expectations. The more you expect and the less you get, the less happy you'll be. If you expect very little and you get very little, you're okay. If you expect very little and you get a lot, you're happy. If you expect a lot and you get a lot, you're okay. If you expect a lot and you get very little, you're unhappy. Reality is expectations minus reality. Or is it reality minus expectations? Reality minus expectations. That's the one, I think. I'm doing it right or wrong, I don't know. But either way, um, I think AEG set expectations in a lot of ways throughout the course of the campaign, starting off from day one, and those expectations weren't met, and then there were unlocks and optional buys and more optional buys, and the price point for some of the content didn't really make sense, they made some new pledge levels. It was a whole big thing. Ultimately, I agreed with the complaints while also understanding AEG's side of things, meaning I don't... T what is this? Oh, that's broken already. That's not great. A little bit of a tear in the box here. Uh, I don't sit here and thinking that anyone is a big evil corporate villain. I think that sometimes people screw up. I think that's the nature of things. Townsfolk Tussle. Uh, they did an early bird on their campaign with 100 copies getting a $15 discount. I could have told them three things if they were asked. I could have told them, one, early birds are already disliked. There's a reason they exist, though, and you should consider them as a marketing tactic. But you should never have a limited 100 copies. That's number one. You should ideally have a 24-hour early bird. Uh, otherwise, you're not actually even accomplishing the point of the early bird to begin with. Number two is the early bird discount should be much more minimal, like 5 to $8 of the range, I'd say, not $15. Uh, three, the early bird should be done in terms of a additional add-on, not a discount on the price. There's a whole variety of reasons you should do those things, but they're all accurate. I'll say that right now. They're all accurate. There are good reasons to do those things. Meaning, but I don't think that they're bad or evil. I think that Townsville Tussle, they, they panic roll, whatever, uh, they didn't know better and they made mistakes. I think people make mistakes all the time. It doesn't matter how many campaigns you back. It doesn't matter what you do. At the end of the day, we're human. We make mistakes. I make mistakes. I say things on camera that I can't take back. I say things on camera that I can't, that I didn't think through how they'd be interpreted. Uh, recently, <laughs> recently I did a video where in the video, my weekend review, I was talking about trade-offs, and I was like, yeah, who you marry? Like, there's a trade-off there. And I was talking about, and hopefully I was clear in the video, I was talking about the fact that there's trade-offs in the sense that you want something one way, I want something another way, and so we have to compromise, and there's trade-offs in marriage. But the way I said it sounded like I was saying that there was a trade-off in who I married, which is not what I meant. And someone pointed that out in the comments, and I was like, that's not the bestest sounding. We all make mistakes, we're all human, and I bought metal coins. You see, this is the nature of the back and forth. These actually, by the way, they're very nice with a caveat metal coins, okay? The chunk, the heft to this, they're very, very solid. These are very nice metal coins. I like them a lot. Uh, what's my caveat? I'm not sure, actually. I actually really like them. No, that's my caveat. Okay, the numbers on some of these are a little muted. Not the worst, but like this coin over here, like there is a three there, but it's not immediately obvious. Uh, same with the 30, same with the one, but I don't know if this is necessarily a problem because they're differentiated enough in sizing and coloring. No, I think it's pretty obvious. So I would say, no, I'm very happy with the metal coins. And look at the way they're scarred up. Let's like try to show you some of these so you can get a feel for how scarred and marked they are on the different sides, the different views. I mean, like these are decently, like these, they went through the effort of making these coins appear marked and scarred and, and damaged and dinged, and they did a great job. So I'm very happy with these metal coins. Uh, the barrels are nice, but honestly, the regular barrels are so nice that I don't know if you need the nicer barrels. I mean, want, yes. Paying the extra price for it, different conversation entirely. Uh, those are always conversations as well. Like, what do you do there? What do you value there? But we have our metal coin box. I like how these boxes are all nicely marked, so you have your things. We're going to have our player deck boxes, I assume. Are they colored? No, they're not player decks. These are the card number decks, because they're going to have different cards that are going to be a different decks, depending on how far away they are, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's how it works. We have our sleeves, which I don't know. I guess it's going to be... This is going to be our starting player box based on having the colors over here. So everything seems very clearly marked. This is your play rate, if I'm not mistaken, showing you the uh, the player, well, the player rate, the tokens, the symbols, all of that. 
uh, just for the cars and the upgrade paths for the characters. That's what it was. These are the upgrade paths. So you can see the full upgrade path for each of the eight characters in the game. I believe there are eight characters. Hopefully I'm right about that. Um, I don't know if I'm going to slot all the cards together properly right now. I don't know if I remember at all how these go back in the box. Let's see if we can figure it out. So, let's see if we can figure this out. Although, before we do, let's take a look at... What do we want? Let's move the knife off to the side. And obviously we're not done. We have the Sea Dogs expansion, which can be you special powers with more cards. It's one of the upgrades and whatnot. We have the promos, which we'll briefly take a look at. I guess. Why not? We have a bunch more of these. What are these? Just more sleeves? Why do I need more sleeves? We have sleeves and more sleeves? Hmm. Someone's going to know what these are for. I don't. I don't remember why I have separate sleeves. These are colored sleeves for your player decks, but why would you... Wouldn't you want your cards to be... Don't remember. I do not remember. I'm going to have to look into the sleeve situation and figure out why I need... Because don't you want your cards to not be similar? Or do you want your cards to be similar? I don't know. But let's go ahead and show you what a card situation looks like using a regular, not a player deck sleeve. Let's show you what like a card situation can look like over here, because this is a card crafting game, and it's worth seeing the rough idea of the upgrade paths of characters and how you can basically do that. So we're going to grab a base game sleeve, single base game sleeve over here. We got our base games. We got our card. We're going to find some upgrade stuff to go through. So let's grab a, let's grab a purser. Purser, can we find a purser? Or we got a bosun, we got a captain. Okay, let's just grab a captain. Captain's right at the top here. So we have our captain over here. We have our level on captain. The captain's gonna go into the sleeve like so. And now we have a card that has this. This is all. It's a blank little captain. Nothing to talk about yet. But then, if I grab these correctly, and these are all just the titles of the cards, those will have to go into the box. But if I grab these, we have more stuff. So we're gonna have a few things. Uh, some of them are going to be based on the going into these over here. So I have to double check where they are. Do they have the marks in them? Yes, perfect. Great. Okay, so let's find the basic captain background. Uh, this I have no idea if this is. I can't remember. It might be a solo thingy. I'm guessing this is a solo deck of cards over here. It just looks solo-ish in terms of the way it's trying to do that there. And then we want to find the captain. We have a level 4 crew, a level 4 first mate. And if we go down to the bosun, we have a captain. Okay, so we have a captain over here that will go into your card. Now, the idea of this is this captain is, like I said already, it's level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4. So you can check that out over here. If we rotate this this way, you can see that that matches the level 1 over here. Level 1, and then also shows you on level 2, so you can see at a glance before anything else happens, that's level 2. And then you're going to rotate that to be like this, so you can get level 2, and then see what's level 3. Now, the way that, practically speaking, works out, and then level 4 and 3 on the back, but the way that works out is you're going to put this behind your captain card into your sleeve so your captain blocks the unnecessary level 2 part but shows you the level 1 part. Okay, so all things are good right now. Your captain's going to allow you to sail. That's expected. Again, you're going to be building a deck and crafting cards. But then, we're not done yet. On the islands, you'll have all these cards that are going to be very, very hard to deal with in terms of stickiness. But you're going to have these cards that let you add things to your deck. So, for example, we're going to have this card over here, which I'm just going to take over here. And we're going to slot this into, into my captain like so. So if I slot this into my captain, we put this like this. And I guess, I don't actually know if this goes behind or in front or not. I don't remember. It's a level one card. Is there a reason it's upside down? I feel, I don't know. I don't remember this part. But let's go ahead and put this in here nonetheless. So if we put this here, you now have a cannon ability on your captain. You see? So we've added an ability to our captain. And if we go ahead and add a level 2 ability, let's go ahead and add a level 3 ability. So if we grab a level 3 card, that again, is hard to shuffle because, you know, these cards are a pain. These cards are a pain. Hopefully that gets easier the way I slot this in. So this level ability over here, right now it would actually take up the same slot. So that would not help me. I'd have to like, choose how do I want to structure this ability or situation. So we're going to go ahead and put that level 3 ability right back there. That's the level 3, that's level 3, that's level 4. But we'll go ahead and grab... Ooh, let's make our captain very, very dangerous. We're going to grab a captain with a whole bunch more cannons. Okay, because that's what we like over here. And so the way you buy your various cards, you can see the captain over here. And you see, you have to make sure it goes... It for sure has to go in front of the backing. But then you put this in here, and boom! You now have a captain with four cannons and a sail and all of that. So that's the way these cards work. I don't know if there's a film on them. Sometimes these cards have a film... These ones kind of don't look like they do, honestly. Uh, sometimes when you have these uh, printed on cards, they have film on them. But these these look all fine. These look all fine. It looks it looks good. I don't know for sure. Uh, but this will all go on top of the card. You'll have your card that you're looking at. You'll have your abilities. You can still keep upgrading your captain. So I can go ahead and upgrade it to now this guy over here. 
who's much more complicated but does much more things and you're constantly doing that in your sleeve so again it's deck building plus card crafting giving you all the good things that you want out of this kind of experience and now i have to go figure out how to put these back so i don't mess up my orders completely that would be ideal i don't like messing things up completely we're not done yet we still have more stuff to go through but let's go ahead and put this stuff away so i don't uh, lose too much focus of what i'm doing um yeah i don't know what i'm doing okay that might be the cost of the card. I don't know. This like might be the cost in barrels to get it, if I recall. Vague recollections of different things. Anyways, so going back to games. We talked about disappointments. We talked about the game, expectations, a uh, bunch of other things. In the end, again, I decided not to back it, but decided to get it. Uh, it worked out well for me. I wasn't sure when I'd get it. I was confident that I would get it. That's not a problem at all, because the nature of the secondhand market is you can definitely get it. Worst case scenario, I would have paid a bit of a premium for it, and I was prepared to do so because because why not? Uh, not because why not, because I said something on camera, and I, I feel that you should have some degree of don't make a fuss if you're not going to fall through in some way. Anyways, I am very happy to hear that Dead Reckoning is coming back to Kickstarter, by the way. And by the way, this is another thing. Okay, this is another thing. The ratings for Dead Reckonings right now, if you go online, where do these cards come from? These cards were just wrapped in a little thing. That's going to be annoying. Uh, we're going to put these cards in here for right now. Uh, but the ratings for Dead Reckoning, if you look online, which you should look online because the ratings are amazing, the ratings currently are incredible. Uh, not like the people rating the game doing the Kickstarter incredible. Look at the people who've received their game and the ratings the game is receiving. They are very, very positive, which for me is not surprising because I played the game and I know it's a good game and I said and made a whole big deal about the fact that it's a good game. Do I want to make the ship now? Let's make the ship now. Fine, we'll make the ship now. Okay, so I said during the Kickstarter, and if you don't want to see me make the ship, you uh, timestamps down below so you can skip to whatever section you do want to see. But I said during the Kickstarter that this is a very good game. I made a whole big deal about it being a very good game. I was very excited about it. I am very excited. I have been very excited about it. And I do like it. I like it a lot when I have an opinion, and that opinion is backed up once other people start getting their hands on the game. Because... There's always this controversy around the influencer, and I hate the term influencer, by the way, but it's practically speaking, it's reality. I hate the controversy, no, not I hate, I hate the term influencer, and there's always controversy around the nature of the hype machine of YouTube and reviewers and everyone being excited about everything. And, and there's multiple reasons for this, and we've gone over it in the past, we're going to go over in the future, we're never going to stop talking about it because the audience never stops talking about it, and so, not necessarily you, but the, the general audience, the royal audience... And so, there's always these conversations, and that means that when I hype up a game, I like it when people agree with me. I do. Uh, not because I need you to agree with me, not because I need you to like the game, but for two reasons, two primary reasons. The first is because I may have gotten a bunch of you to go ahead and get the game, and it would be, it would make me feel sad if you uh, get a game based off my glowing praise for the game, and then it's not for you. That makes me feel sad. Like, you spent money, you researched it, I was part of your research, and it wasn't for you. It's not my fault, it's not my problem, it's my opinion or whatever, but it still it makes me feel a little bit bad. And the second is because of the fact that if I'm going to be hyped about a game, I don't want people thinking that it's just me being hyped because I'm like, oh, Alex is hyped about another game, another 5 out of 5 from Alex, oh, that guy, that guy loves everything. I don't love everything. But part of the problem is that, in general, you're more likely to see the things I do love. Uh, one of the things I always find fascinating, and it's something that I fall victim to as well, is if you're judging how much a content creator likes things based on you seeing them on Kickstarter pages, you're doing it wrong. Because guess what? They only go on Kickstarter pages of games they like. Pick whatever content you want, content creator you want. In my case, I'll pick myself, just because I don't want to point fingers at others. But if I, if you think that, oh, well, I saw Alex in 14 campaigns and he loved all of them, that guy's a shill. Well, I only went on the 14 campaigns that I loved. It's far less likely that they're putting me on the campaigns, on the page of the campaigns that I was more middling of. Although, to their credit, I have seen some companies, when I give a game like a 3.5, which is like a 7. I mean, a 7 is like a, a good rating, but not necessarily a great rating. Some of them still put me on the page. And I think that's smart, because what they're doing is they're saying, we consider this positive feedback. And by putting it on the page, they set, to a certain extent, the definition of what that is. I've always thought it's a good idea when companies put medium reviews on their page, uh, or even a negative one, and embrace it and say, hey, if you're worried this game isn't for you, check out, you know, Board Game Co. and see his opinion, because maybe it's not for you. That's called the anti-sell. It works very well. It's a way of owning negative feedback and embracing negative feedback. Uh, it's always scary to do, because you can't guarantee maybe you'll actually show it to people who wouldn't have seen it, and will walk away. But the, the anti-sell is a very effective marketing technique where you are so confident in your product that you're willing to tell people the reasons it's not for you. There's all these different aspects of, of this. Like when you get interviews, you know, going in with the premise of why should, 
why should I work for you as opposed to why should you hire me? You have to be careful. You don't want to be a jerk about it because if you're a jerk about it, that can sound very problematic and comes across as arrogant. But if you if you don't don't overly sell, sometimes it can be a, a good thing. You know, the whole co co classic concept of sell me this pencil. Why should I sell you this pencil? Like, why do you need the pencil? Uh, there's all these different conversations around selling and marketing and all these things. And I always find them fascinating because they are interesting. Some people don't like them because they are manipulative by nature, which I, I understand while also not having a problem with uh, the nature of marketing, the nature of conversations. Everything's manipulative. I would like you to subscribe to the channel. I would like you to watch more of my videos. I would like you to become a Patreon. I would like you to, what else can I say? Um, I don't really know, but I, I would like those things to happen. How do I get those things to happen in the most effective way possible? And in general, the most effective way possible usually means making you want to do the thing that I want you to do. That's a, a regular idea of marketing. It's making it a win-win because that's the most effective way. Some people don't like that. How dare you give a sale on your product because a sale is going to make me want to buy it. Well, yes, we want you to buy it and we'd like you to want to buy it. But it's, it's always inherently complicated because of the nature of what marketing is. But please and thank you are forms of marketing or manipulation. Let's go ahead and look at this and try building this. Uh, please and thank you are forms of marketing and manipulation by the very nature of what they're doing because they are basically trying to use words to get people to do things that they might otherwise not have done. And, and if you don't view it that way, that's fine, but that is what it is. A please and thank you is no different than a sale, than adding a product. They're just different versions of the same thing. They're different versions of trying to get other people to align and wanting to do what you want them to do. That's all it is. It's just anything else is just sugarcoating and dressing it up. Let's make sure we have the right pieces here. But yeah, my point is I, I don't have a problem with marketing per se. Um, I just, I understand that some people do and I understand why some people do, but that's as far as it goes down the rabbit hole. Okay, give me a second here. I need to semi-focus on this. So we talked about that. We talked about that. We talked about marketing. We talked about please and thank yous. I'm now trying to convince you that please and thank you are manipulative. This is annoying. This is actually really annoying to build. Okay, because you see, this doesn't go properly in there. I have to kind of like push a bit. And the fact that you have to push a bit means I'm worried that it won't perfectly align. Jeez, this is really, really annoying, actually. See, this is, this goes on. And I have backup shifts if I really need to, but I don't love how this is not going on smoothly. It's like, I have to like pry it through. Am I doing the right part? Like, I feel like I'm definitely doing the right part. It can't be this, it can't be this. No, this is the right part. This is definitely the right part. It just doesn't want to go in which is annoying because I would like it to go in. There we go. Now go on this side. Okay, that one went in. Okay, it looks like it was one side that was really giving me the issue. Nope, nope, we got another one over here. Another annoying side here. Okay, so we've gotten them in. We've pushed, we've prodded. Now we have to push more and prod more to get this all the way down. And the problem is if you push too hard, you can actually end up breaking this. So you want to be careful and precise. In other words, you don't want to do it while you're on camera and being mindful of the camera time and how interested the people are in watching you just poke and push. It's never a good thing to do this stuff. Okay, we've gotten that in. We now ideally want to grab the sale. That looks like we want not that piece, not that piece. Um, this piece, it looks like there's two of these. So which one? Front sale. Front sale. It says front sale on it. In case you're wondering, in case you're worried, they actually uh, anticipated me not knowing which one it would be. So this has to go on like this, I imagine, and then in like that. That seems to be the way to go. Okay, so we're gonna put this in like this, okay? Um, this doesn't want to go, no, don't. Are you supposed to be curving backwards? Is that what's supposed to be happening? Because that doesn't feel like it's supposed to happen that way. What are you doing to me? This doesn't make sense. This doesn't make any sense. That is, give me a second here. No, it doesn't go like that. It doesn't go like that. I guess it doesn't go like that. Okay, so this goes like, no, this makes no, I'm not happy with this. Does this fold inwards? Oh, that folds inwards. Okay, so that has to go like this, and this has to go like this, which means we could go ahead and put this like this. Okay, so now that we fold those edges in, you want these flaps folded in. It's not necessarily as clear, but I, I do see it now. I see it. I'm not like going to give them a hard time because I see it now. That's going to push this down, except that, dear Lord, I'm gonna I'm gonna want to murder somebody because this is oh there we go okay there we go there we go it's got a little bit of an edge over there where I can push down like so and then we push it in and it goes in okay we're making progress we got our ship partially assembled this is the most boring unboxing video ever uh, then we're gonna go ahead and do the middle lane we have this piece over here which I already put there we have that piece this just is all I don't see what it's doing differently 
Okay, this maybe. This has to go up, maybe. Oh, on both sides of the ship. Okay, we need one of these. No. No, none of this makes any sense. Stop it. Stop it. This goes over here. This probably goes up like this, maybe, but I'm not confident of it in the slightest. So we're going to go ahead and push it up and hope for the best right now. This could go up like this. Okay, I can see how that could be a thing. I can see that now. But we need to still push it up. Okay, great. So we have partial side over here, but we don't have the other side. So something's going to have to wrap around. This looks to be the wrap around side of things. Oh, that's right, because it has to be tilted. That's what's throwing me off. You don't want an even side. It needs to be tilted, which means you need to be having this like so. Okay, give me a second. We're almost there. We're almost there. The people who skipped ahead to the other part are so much happier with the decision right about now. Uh, we're going to slot this down like so, like there. Perfect. Um, you see we now have the, the dice tray dropping down. And then we're going to put this rear sail in. I guess the rear sail goes in now. Uh, the rear sail also needs to have this part punched out in the middle. Always resort to Robin Hood if you're uncertain of what to hum next. Okay, there we go. Precise, measured, careful, he says, while being neither precise, nor measured, nor careful. I assume there's something there that'll keep that in place. We'll find out in a minute, uh, the hard way, probably. Okay, we have this over here, which goes in here. It looks like it's exactly the same in the direction, so I'm just going to confidently move forward, hoping for the best. Confidently moving forward, hoping for the best has been how this entire channel has been going for the past two years. Okay, that does not make sense. Does this go up higher? This does go up higher, does it? I can't tell. Um, yeah, I guess it does go up higher. Okay, so we need to push this through, and then push you up higher, and you up higher. Okay, that works-ish. Okay, we're slowly, slowly making progress on the ship. There's another one. There's a ghost ship. We're not building that on camera. One is enough, although arguably the second one will go faster, but I still can't imagine you'd want to see it. This is going to go around the edge like a bit of a sleeve, so let's give this some proper bends so we don't like mess the carboard up, because the problem with the bends is if you're not careful that you could mess the carboard up. Okay, let's put this down over here. Uh, this wants to go like so there. Okay, great. I like that. I like that. I can work with that. I can sort of work with that. Let's put this in here. Hoping for the best, gotta kind of shove it in there and then push this. I'm like kind of poking and prodding and hoping that I poke and prod in ways that result in this being built as opposed to result in this ways not being built. This is gonna go over here like so. There we go. Okay. This is feeling like I'm trying too hard. Again, speaking for two years of the channel. Okay. That kind of went in appropriately, he says, not confidently. This goes in like so. Yep, perfect. That that went in. And this has to go in on the other side, which means this is going to need to come up too. And this is going to need to, like, kind of hook over there in a way that does not seem to be what should be happening. This was a mistake. This was a mistake. This is a mistake. Ugh. Yeah, this part is, like really struggling here because I have to try to get like three things happening at once on the same aspect. Okay. There we go. That's kind of working, he says, not confident. Honestly, doing this on video was probably a mistake because I'm trying to do this fast instead of right. It's a good thing I have a backup ship apparently. There we go. There we go. Nope, it's still not going. It's still not going. So we need to really kind of pull this down and then just push it through okay i may give up in a second because i really don't want to make this any worse than it already is depends if that will where's my knife mm, it's not gonna make it better i'm just gonna stab myself okay I'm going to finish this later, but you can get a general sense of how this goes. Uh, then I'm supposed to put the like sails on the other side and the, the sail on one side. This sail goes in the back, I believe. The other sail, this I can actually probably do now, because that won't actually hurt it anyway. Let's go ahead and put this in. One of these things is not going in properly, and we're going to fix that later. But the rest of it is actually pretty cool. It does seem pretty sturdy, though. The good news is that the harder it is to put together, the more sturdy it is on the way down. This can probably go in as well on this side. I'm not worried of those. The one part that's not going on perfectly is actually not preventing it from functioning as a ship. So that part's all good. But does not mean that the whole picture is good. It just means that I am means that I didn't make the worst mistakes. I just made bad mistakes. Okay. This goes down like this. This goes down like how many further do I push that? 
Okay, so here we have our pirate ship. We're gonna toss dice down here, or the, uh, whatever they are, the cubes. What if we toss cubes? We toss cubes. We roll the cubes down, and then this whole thing lines up nicely with this board over here, where you put it down like that, or something, some version of putting it there-ish, and then the whole thing just comes tumbling down. You, you toss a handful of cubes down, and you see where they land. So like this, and then you see where they land. I don't remember if you toss things out again if they missed. You usually don't have that many going at once, but then you cash them in, you take the rewards, the benefits, and I will fix the one part of my ship that isn't perfect later, he says, confidently. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and move to part two. This is going in properly. This is like really, there we go. Okay, this is going there. That's going there, that's going there. We have a pirate ship. Uh, the pirate ship could go into the box, which is the nice part. So the way the box is presented is it kind of goes in here, which is actually kind of nice. Although the, I don't know if they took into account properly the fact that you have two of these bad boys. And it doesn't seem like, that, it kind of doesn't seem like it works perfectly because there it does, it goes, it goes. Okay. As I say, it seems like a drop too wide. So let's go back to reboxing, putting things away before we dive into the other aspects of what they've given. Um, I don't remember how this went. I think it went like this which means this probably went on its side, because I remember there was this here, there were a bunch of cards somewhere. Where are the cards? Where are the cards? Where are the cards go? Did I just, oh, I put them in here. That's what I did. Then we had a bunch of these like so, I believe, vaguely. And we had like this, and then we had these like so. Okay, so we had all these sitting in the middle like that, which means we probably had these down here, or some version thereof. We had these over here, maybe. Again, my confidence is astounding because I have none. I mean, I have none of where these things went. Not about life in general. That was rude. We have this going down there in the middle. That's fine. We have these boards. Poss possibly, like, I feel like this is really inefficient the way that's done. But, hey, who knows? Um, again, keep in mind, they're not actually supposed to be like this properly. Okay. And then we have this over here, this over here. And we can put stuff in and mostly hope for the best with the caveat that some of the tokens that I'll have to punch out later don't actually fit in. But this is decent, meaning this would all go in here like so. We have all our token trays, but that looks like I got all back in. That is good enough for me. That is a semi reboxing, although I still have these cubes over here that I still haven't figured out exactly what those are placed or in which box. Those are probably, those probably replace the black cubes, the black cubes. Okay, cool. This is a much longer unboxing than I anticipated, by the way, but that's what happens when you sit there and try to build a thingy out. So let's go ahead and go through quickly some other stuff because quickly is the key word. We have our ghost ship, which handy dandily comes with another uh, place over here, which is nice for larger player accounts because it means you can each have your own sections where you put things down. Although I don't know if that actually works with the game. You might specifically want the, uh, the other players in play. Uh, the ghost ship gives you another ship, just all ghost theme. So you can go ahead and do that. Then we have, let's put this off to the side. Then we have the cards over here. We have the sleeves, which I left out and didn't put back properly. That one sleeve is kind of bending around the edge. Maybe it's all the sleeves bending around the edge. I don't know. We have the old sea dogs. Let's go ahead and take at the old sea dogs. Oh, and I left one of these over here. And the Sea Dogs. So, Sea Dogs are more cards, more abilities. This is one of the things that were extras. Uh, I don't remember what is or isn't available in retail, but like I said already, this has come back to Kickstarter, which is good for all of those who, well, want a copy. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. We have a die. A die, which I don't remember what that's for, if anything, at all. We have our Sea Dogs little expansion cards. We have these over here, which is more of the, the Sea Dogs. Uh, covered, I assume, by a leading card. Yep, we have a leading card covering it. And we have commanders, commanders. I think these just gave abilities or customized differences to the various characters. I don't remember exactly how these worked, but they're, they're more cards. More cards, more stuff for the game. Did I just throw away the cover card? No, I kept the cover card. Not a lot of interesting things to see there unless we go over all the expansion stuff, all over the, um, the actual text, I mean. Then we have the die, which I left out. We should probably include that. And I'll have to figure out and how to optimize the setup to include as much as possible there. And let's take a look at Deep Legends Saga Expansion 1. This is the part where there may or may not be spoilers. Check the tag down below in case you want to see if there's anything that uh, spoils things. Uh, the sagas, I, so the sagas were one of the tricky things that they didn't actually reveal that much about the sagas during the campaign. They had a few design diaries in case you wanted to look into it. But they specifically and intentionally didn't reveal that much because the goal was to be like these journeys you play through. Not really a campaign per se, but... I guess a campaign per se. We have the encounters. 
You have attacked and defeated the ship of Captain. I'm not going to read that. Nope, I don't know what that means. I don't know what any of this stuff means. I'm going to avoid reading that past what I just read. But you've definitely attacked something. We have the Sea Legends book over here. What is a saga? Sagas are expansions such as the Dead Reckoning game that let you explore new regions and discover new tales over the course of multiple games. Incorporating a saga expansion means you'll be adding some additional advancements and counters to your game the first time you set up, but most of the new content will be discovered during gameplay, organically expanding your game each time you play through encounters and player choices. This newly discovered content then becomes part of all future games. So I'm thinking kind of like um, uh, Ship Base or Space Base. Space Base and the uh, Shy Pluto expansion. Like, it's a way of adding content to the game across the, the saga. So, I, I don't think I'm actually going to go into these further. There's some cards, there's some tokens, there's some ship parts. There's a box that says, do not look at these cards unless instructed. So, I don't think there's much I could really go over here that okay. um, does this justice without just uh, me showing you nothing at all. So, I think I'm going to just de-shrink this, because why not? We have the Salt and Thunder Saga. And I assume, my assumption is that when they come back to Kickstarter, it's coming back with a reprint. And if I have to guess, I would say uh, two sagas. More than that seems like overkill. Two seems like a good number. Uh, the problem is, is that enough to come back to Kickstarter? I don't know. I mean, they'll certainly make money. The game, like I said already, is getting good ratings. Which brings back to the that train of thought that I lost. Uh, yeah, I like when people see a game as good that I said is good or agree with me because it does add validity to the fact that I, I put myself out there and I put my opinion there and I'm not just trying to sell you on something. I genuinely love that game. Sometimes it's a little harder. With games like Aquatica that are liked but not loved. Here's some uh, space-based expansions. Ooh, Calico Jack. That's funny. You have a card expansion for... Uh, I Actually, I don't have Santa Monica. I don't have Space Space. Uh, not Space Space. I don't have Smash Up. Don't care about those. I do have Tiny Towns. I do have this and I do still have space space so I have two of these three expansions so some promos we have tiny towns if adjacent to a whatever uh, when constructed gain one coin for each you have in your play including this one ooh intriguing that's intriguing we have calico jack five victory points if you have a pirate costume when adopted steal a tuna from your neighbors yeah uh, that's cute Anyways, these are just promos. They were a nice little thing, but again, it goes back to the frustration. People are like, why are you charge me for promos? And you're just throwing them in the game. They're not charging them, but it, 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 whatever, people. And I don't mean that like negative people. I just mean there were frustrations. In any case, this has gone on long enough. Longer than I anticipated. Um, that is what it is. That's the nature of these videos. I'll be back with more. I'll be back with a Hunter's AD unboxing and rambling at some point. Uh, my daughter and I will be doing Creature Comforts, like I said already. And I have a bunch more coming. I have Wonderland's War. I have uh, Massive Darkness. And I know I have more. I mean, Undead or Alive will probably be soon, too. We'll see. There's always going to be some of these. In any case, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you hanging out way longer than you should have. And until next time, have a good one.